Hi folks, let's make some orange pallets. These are solid billet pallets that go on top of our orange vices that we use for fixturing and for work holding. These things are awesome. You can purchase them direct from orange. We bought a pallet of the material saw cut from Alro for about $50 per piece. So pretty good amount of cost savings. And let's walk through, they're not that hard to make. We're gonna make up the rest of this pallet. So we've got them sitting on the shelf, ready to use as we need them. Let's go through some design tweaks we made for this next round and let's watch some machining footage on the VM3. We are probing out of Fusion 360, which is awesome. You first have to set your G54 just to the approximate location, yeah, plus or minus a quarter inch in X and Y. And this is not doing Z because Z won't change. And it, Fusion makes it really easy to come in here and check the each part as we put it in. Or if you're gonna use a stop like we have, you don't even have to update your probe each one. We did set the probe height to a six inches. That's just a safety buffer. We reduced that on production parts, but here I'd rather have a protected position move to avoid crashing the probe tip or the probe body. Although we did just publish a video on the folks that make aftermarket probe tips. So if you do break one, you can go watch the factory where they make them. Card to that video here. So who recognizes that tool? It is a one inch shear hog being held in a mirror tool milling chuck, which is a really secure way to hold something. This is one of the first times I've tried machining aluminum, especially on the Haas, without coolant. Fusion 2D adaptive, 3,000 surface feet per minute, 12 and a half thou feed per tooth, that's 143 inches per minute, 0.75 inch or 75% step over, quarter, uh, a little more than a quarter inch step down. This thing is, this is, for me, pushing it. Yes, the machine can do more, and we'll actually have to do a video testing, pushing it to the limit, but this is a beefy cut. I tell you, if you were here, uh, you would hear it. It's noisy. It does a couple of weird moves at the end. So it comes up here, and it, it's actually not a strange move. It's, it's cutting off the top of the diamond pin. That's a f totally fine for this product, but if we were in production, we'd wanna do some more specific tool pass to get rid of that slight inefficiency. Coming in real quick to spot some of the holes. We're not actually drilling these. So the big design change here, we used to press in dowel pins into these. And I'll tell you, it's a really difficult to get the fixtures off of the orange vices because you've got to lift so perfectly straight up or they bind and you've got to lift up relatively far distance. I'll tell you, it made me not like them for a while. And then I realized, wait a minute here, let's go buy diamond pins. It's what we did, if you actually card here, uh, to the video we did on making a tramming bar for the Haas, which has worked out great. But I'm still a little bit of a bootstrapper and buying enough diamond pins for all the pallet, of how many of these we've got was gonna be, I don't know, 100, 150 bucks. And I thought, wait a minute here, let's just machine the diamond into the pallet. Downside is it's going to be aluminum. So, okay, if it wears out, who cares? I can still machine the worn out diamond off and press in either a short dowel pin or a diamond no big deal. So that's one reason why we added some extra center drilled holes as well as we did drill and bore, you'll see in a second, one hole that we, we've got good locating geometry on the underside. Here, we're doing a horizontal op in Fusion 360. The floor needs to be cleaned up. The shear hog is not the right tool to give us a really good mating surface between this aluminum uh, top and the cast iron body of the orange. 2,800 service feet per minute tooth out per tooth, you know, taking it easy at 85 inches a minute. The only thing I don't like about this is, this is a beautiful solid carbide tool from Lakeshore. I generally hate using these for something so silly like this because just such a slight chance that you chip it or nick it or wear it out. And it's an expensive uh, tool, rightfully so. It's an ex expensive carbide. So I'm wondering if there's a better way I could be decking these and cleaning them off. You could use a smaller tool for sure. It would just take a little longer. AB Tools, link in the video description to this two inch dovetail cutter. We had to really dial in the Fusion 360 linking moves 
by adjusting the radius and the angle and so forth. And by the way, link in the video description where you can download this solid model, including the cam for the folks that support NYC CNC. You look at the simulation, you can see we're barely missing that pin as we plunge down, but close is good, close is clearance. Running this at 2,000 surface feet per minute, four thou per tooth, about 45 inches a minute. One pass. Three eighth inch end mill doing a 2D adaptive. I was super nervous for this because we aren't using coolant. It just, if we use coolant, you wouldn't see anything. And I'm worried about chip welding, but I tell you, there's so much good natural chip evacuation when you've got a good tool, good feeds and speeds on the adaptive strategy. 1400 surface feet, that's about 14,000 RPMs, 171 inches a minute, which is about 4,000 per tooth. And a 0.125 step over, that's pretty good. 33% step over. Turned out great. Doing a 2D contour cleanup, I wanted to get that slot. I don't think that slot's all that critical. Actually, it's, it's really uh, just to give us the dovetails. I'm staying one or half a thou off of the base, I believe, or am I going half a thou under? Yeah, to make sure we clean up that corner. Then coming in with a quarter inch tool and cleaning up the diamond pin. So this is obviously a very critical dimension. What we did with the 2D contour, 900 surface feet, one thou per tooth. And under passes, we have one finishing pass, which is at a one thou inch step over. Then we have repeat finishing passes on. So it's gonna walk around this a couple of times. We ended up walking it in by seven ten thousandths of an inch to get the perfect fit we were looking for. Having one diamond pin located north-south, the other located east-west, will give us plenty of locating accuracy for this machine. Now we switch to a through spindle coolant drill to poke that hole through real quick, which we then come back and use a three, the same tool 17 to bore it out. Normally I would have done this drill earlier on, but I wanted to delay using the coolant as long as possible just for the sake of filming this video. Uh, we, we ran a bunch more of these right after we made this one and we did reorder the toolpath because I really wanna do that horizontal after I've done things like poke holes through just to make sure that horizontal gives us a good, you know, flat coplanar surface across the whole area. So now all we've gotta do is bring in a chamfer tool, do some edge breaks. I didn't walk around the whole part, which Yes, I would like to, and we have in the past, but I would rather create all of the side geometry after I mount the thing on the vise. And these, these are cut about an eighth of an inch long, and chamfering it means I've gotta cut some side slots and then chamfer, it, it's, it, it's not worth it. And we use, you'll see here at the end, just a hand, no good tool, to make sure we're not gonna hurt ourselves as we handle them. I thought the chamfer around the diamond pin looked really cool. It's one of those examples where it's funny, the toolpath creates something that looks cooler than what you would think. We're just walking around and it creates that kind of 3D chamfered look to the diamond pin. And we're done. I've got a ring gauge that we use for calibrating one of our metrology tools. I should say calibrating it in-house or checking it. I uh, did use that as a quick way to make sure that I had a good fit before we pulled it off because uh, obviously that's the, the, be the better way to do it is to check it before you unlock it out of the vise. Quick edge break and deburring tool. 
pull them out of the vices. Uh, the rubber bands are a cheap and easy way to hold parallels. Yes, the coolant tends to break them or turn them brittle over time, but the rubber bands are not that expensive. So we've been using that for the last few weeks and it tends to help out. We slid the screw in for the orange vise, which has got your locking carriers on it. This was the big moment. Set it down, tightened it, did the knock test, works awesome, works great. Folks, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this stuff, stick around. We're gonna be doing some more videos showing how we use these in production, how we use these to make parts with Mighty Bite fixtures, with other work holding. Otherwise, uh, I thought it would be fun to enjoy an orange. Thank you for watching, folks. Oh, good.